All right, so we're gonna do a little vid video tour of Smokey's aviary today. It's a six foot hexagonal aviary. And for those that watched my videos before, you guys might've known that or noticed that I got a new aviary for her. Her old one was, um, it was longer, but it wasn't as deep as this one. So I felt that space wise, this one provided more mobility on the inside. One of the most um, important considerations that you guys gotta make when getting an aviary is what kind of flooring um, you're gonna have. And through just trial and error, I found that cement um, pavers, they work really well because every couple of days, I just simply um, hose it down and it gets pretty clean. And um, aviary wise, if you guys do get one, it's important that nothing can bury underneath your aviary and get in. So with cement or pavers, that um, kind of solves that problem. We're going to start off with, um, I'm going to show you guys Smokey's breakfast this morning. We have edamame, we have carrots, corn, peas, and also blueberries. On the side we have dandelion greens, which more or less is just for her to shred. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look on the inside. Okay, here she's eating. And I also want to show you guys a couple things that I add for enrichment. And these are really important because training alone, training is good because it offers one way to enrich your bird's life, but it's not the only way. So another way that I offer enrichment is through foraging. This is probably one of the most um, invaluable things that I ever got, one of the best things I ever got Smokey. It's a plastic ball with um, these slits on it. So inside, I put a nut inside. But in addition to that, I could also string veggies, like dandelion greens, like you see here. And even though she doesn't eat it, she shreds it. And I think that's really important for them because that's what they'll do um, in the wild. Here's another foraging toy. You guys have seen that one before. And something that I added about six months ago is this Boston fern up here. Now, if you guys do add a live plant, and that's lasted me for about six months already and still going strong, it's important that your bird doesn't get access to the soil that's in the pot. So the way that I eliminate that from happening is if you guys take a look at the aviary's roof, Smokey can't climb this, so there's no spot for her to climb. I also position the plant in a way where if she were to perch on these branches here, or even if she were to cling to the side of the cage, the only part of the plant that she has access to is, are the actual, um, is the actual plant itself, but she can't get access to this pot, which is important. So a good way for you guys to do that is while your bird is perched up here, maybe hold a treat and see how far they can reach up. I found out that this is way out of her reach, so there's no way, even if she try to climb, there's no way for her to reach this pot. Hi Smokes. How do you like your aviary? Also, um, all of these branches are natural branches. This is ribbon wood. I got this from a guava tree and I just pretty much um, took off all the bark. So it's more, um, there's more grip on it. You guys might also notice that all of the branches are uh, very um, different diameters, which is important for your bird's feet. This one here I'd say is about two inches in diameter. Whereas this one is one inch. And this one's half an inch. And the benefit of a natural branch compared to what you would get from a wooden dowel is no two parts on a branch is going to be exactly the same diameter. That helps to exercise your bird's feet. And all of the stuff here that you guys see, all these branches and the way that it's all um, put together, um, I pretty much did all that myself. The only branch that I actually bought was this ribbon wood branch, but everything else is something that um, I was able to get from some friends because they had trees at their house. And I just asked them if I can 
take a branch and they said yes so okay she just got this opened and I think there's an almond inside Smokey go get it there's an almond inside you want your almond or do you want to scratch you want to scratch Some of you have also asked me, what is that thing that she does where it looks like she's biting me and she makes that clicking sound? That's her way of showing affection. So when she, when she does that, she's trying, to be, um, she's trying to show some affection. What you doing, Smokes? What you doing? Can I see your foot? No? Hey, big bird. She hasn't discovered it yet, but on this toy up here, it's actually a Nutriberry. So there's all sorts of hidden treats that she could look for and find in this aviary, and that keeps her really busy. Like I said, guys, um, even though she's not eating the dandelions, I think it's really important personally for birds to be able to shred greens because that's, that's something that they do all the time in the wild. So we have to allow them the opportunity to do that. Which leads me back up to this fern. You guys take a look at it. All of these, um, the part of this plant up here, they're all kind of trimmed down. Smokey did all that. Whereas on this side, there's a lot that aren't um, trims, and that's because she can't reach that part over there. This part she can. And just every day I just missed it. Just missed it a little bit. And it, it's all I need to do. She also has several different types of toys inside her aviary. Here's a second. You guys saw that? Here's another. And this kind of food holder thing you guys see here is a coconut. Um, I didn't, well, I, there was a toy that she had that had this coconut thing, but once the toy was destroyed, I felt it was kind of a waste just to throw this part away. So I took this part, drilled a hole in the bottom, and I just screwed it into this perch. I also found that by giving your birds um, veggies, greens, and fruits to eat, they tend to eat their pe pellets a little bit more when you guys give that. Because it's a combination, I think they like, you know, after they get um, their beaks all wet, they like to eat something more dry. So this aviary allows her to climb all over the place, and the, she found her Nutriberry. What's going on, Smokes? Can I see your tail, Smokey? Let's see your red tail. Check that out. Nice tail feather, Smokes. She's really, really gentle. And that's one of the things about Smokey is she's super gentle. She's never bitten me to the point where I can even feel um, the pressure. There's, she doesn't apply any pressure at all. Smokey, step up. Good. What you doing? I'll show you guys right here. Can you perch? Good. Smokey. So 
I'm trying to show you guys how far she could reach. And as you can see, there's a big distance still, even though she's trying to stretch her head, there's a still a big distance between her beak and this pot. And that's important because you don't want her to get access to that soil. Now, if you guys yeah. find that um, you don't have an aviary, but you want to keep a live plant and you want to give your, your bird access to a live plant, what you could also do is you can keep that plant outside of the cage and just have um, the stems pointing towards um, the cage bars and your bird can kind of reach and shred the, um, the greens that way. Smoke, step up. Come on here. Now when you guys are, um, when you're kind of setting up your cage or your aviary, it's also important that the perch placements are placed strategically so that if the bird were to stand on, stand on them and poop, it wouldn't fall down on the perch below it. So this one, if she poops on there, it doesn't fall down on any perch below. Same here and same with this one up here. And she got her almond. Get your almond. And sometimes she does that because she wants a head scratch. So she's trying to swing that thing around so it can scratch her head. I'm actually really surprised she's not trying to get her almond in there right now. Get it, Smokes. Get it, we want to see you crack the almond. Yep, and she's just playing with it. Here, let me get it for her. Smokey, what are you doing? Do you want the almond? All right. It's a powerful beak. Let me see if I can get you guys um, kind of a rotating view of this aviary. It's a six foot hexagonal aviary and even though um, it's a pretty good size, I do feel that in the future I do want to upgrade to something a little bit bigger something so that she can at least fly a good distance from. All right, so I'm going to wrap it up. Um, one last thing I want to let you guys know is even though she has this aviary and even though there's a lot of enrichment opportunities in here, well, actually, there's two things I want to talk about. If you're planning on getting a parrot or if you guys are even considering it, um, I know that some people watch my videos and think, oh wow, now I'm really inspired to get a parrot. Just keep in mind that this is something that um, you, you don't just wake up and think, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to get a parrot because I want to, I think I can do this, um, you know, like once in a while. This is not something that you do once in a while, it's something that you do every day. So um, it's a lot of work. The bird pretty much becomes a big part of your life. So be prepared for that. This is not something that, you know, you do like every every once every week or once every month it's something that you wake up and you do every day you got to be prepared prepared for that 
And the second thing I want to just talk about is even though she has this aviary, it's not a replacement for being outside of the cage. She still needs time outside of the cage and flying around. So can't just keep a bird locked up inside a cage.